Okay, so for you guys who are just joining, we already did an amazing podcast, and um, there was actually a hand I really wanted to talk to Melanie about, but we didn't have time in the confines of our regularly scheduled podcast. But this is another one from Poker After Dark, the Femme Fatale Night, where Melanie just crushed basically everything. This hand, I thought it was super interesting. I didn't know if other people were going to think it was standard, but it was a huge, huge win for, for you, Melanie. So kind of bring us in, bring us into the situation. Tell us what went down. So, um, this is a hand that, that, uh, like you said, I think people might think is just standard, the call down, especially like post flop. I don't know if there's really, um, much of another way to play this hand. Um, but pre flop was actually really interesting. So what had happened was Tracy had opened, I think she had opened a 600, Kristen, Kristen had made it 2K, and Kristen had been um, playing a very aggressive game. She'd been three-betting Tracy a lot, um, playing a lot. She was on Tracy's direct left, so she had been getting into a lot of uh, pots with her where she had direct position, and uh, there was just a lot going on there. So Kristen's three-bet like didn't necessarily mean any too much to me, and there was a, I think there's an argument um, for flat calling uh, because of Kristen's range there, but I, I, I just don't think. I think I just put myself in a better situation when I four bet that hand. The only thing that was unfortunate is that I hadn't really, and maybe I'd only like three bet once pre flop at that point. Um, so it was, it was definitely a spot where I thought it would be more transparent that I had a premium hand. Um, but it could also be a spot where I feel like Tracy could talk herself into thinking I was taking advantage of Kristen taking advantage of her constantly. And that's reasonable too. So, um, I decided that, uh, that cold four betting would be, uh, the best for that situation. So I made it, I think 6,500 or something like that. And then Tracy came back over the top. Um, I think it was something to like 15, five or 16 or something like that. And, um, like I said, it's something where Tracy could definitely think I'm taking advantage of Kristen taking advantage of her. But I also think the typical thing in that spot to do, if you're Tracy, is just to think that and then get out of the way and let Kristen sort of take the stand against me. So it's hard. It's definitely harder to to execute your read that someone could be doing that. Um, and it's it's a spot where you know Kristen Kristen still could have a hand. Kristen would still be three betting all of her good hands. So I expected Tracy to get out of the way more often than not. So when Tracy four bet. I was not actually thrilled about it because um, I had seen her cold call a three bet with jacks. I thought she might just call a hand like tens jacks queens versus my cold four bet. I didn't think she would fold them, but I thought she would call. I also thought she would call hands like ace king and ace queen maybe. So for her four bet, I really didn't think she should be repping much more than aces. Um, I think she could have ace, king, or queens occasionally. She could definitely have kings as well. Um, but it's really hard when I have both both kings. So Kristen folded, and I thought I had a pretty difficult decision because Tracy is basically repping aces, and I really didn't know if she, even if she thought I was taking advantage of the situation when I really hadn't been aggressive free flop. But even if she thought that, I didn't know that she would necessarily go for it. Um, and that's fine. I just really didn't think she was bluffing. So I was thinking about what to do. I was like, can I really fold this hand pre-flop? Can I really fold Kings? Should I call? What's my plan after the flop? Like, should I try to get it in here? Is there any way? Um, and after a while I was, I was taking a long time making this decision and she asked if I wanted a count of her stack. And that immediately made me think I was good because I thought if she had aces, she would just sit quietly. She wouldn't, she wouldn't make a peep. She wouldn't offer me anything. And this seemed like she was nervous to like a sort of degree and she was smiling and I was just getting, like I said before, getting like the gauge based on her off of her baseline behavior that this was a, this was something that indicated weakness. And then I started thinking about the previous hands that she had played and I thought that she had overplayed her hand, um, jacks a little bit. There was a hand before where we had gotten into a three-way pot. I had had, um, king queen suited. I had got three bet by Sophia who had queens and then Tracy cold called with jacks. Um, and I also called King Queen suited and the flop was like something like seven, six, nine with two hearts of my suit. And it went check, um, Sophia C bet with her Queens and, and, um, Tracy re-raised on that flop. Sorry, Tracy raised on that flop with jacks and I ended up folding and Sophia ended up folding. And I thought that was just like somewhat 
like she she obviously thought her hand was good and was trying to win the just win the pot um, on the flop and protect her equity. But it made me think that she might be willing. So I, I took that data and I extrapolated um, from it some ways that I thought she might play other hands. And and after I thought about that, I thought that she might actually be willing to to sort of overplay a hand here, like queens or ace king or, or whatever. So. At that point in time, I decided to call, and my plan would, was going to be to fold on ace high or um, queen high flops. I, I might have had a, a more difficult decision with jack high because I really didn't think she was going to forbid that hand. But, but like I said, my gauge was that she was she was more likely to overvalue um, her hands. So, but but my general plan was to fold on ace high or queen high, and otherwise call down, um, and then. The flop made it easy for me because it was king, deuce, deuce, and she checked. Um, and, oh, yeah, or sorry, king, three, three, sorry. And um, You can see the screen right now, right? Yeah, I can see the screen. Okay. Sorry. I, I wasn't flush. sure if I was still screen sharing and I wanted to make sure. Okay. King, king three, three with a flush draw. So I thought um, this would definitely, if she had done something weird with like a hand like ace, queen suited, which I, again, I really didn't think she had, um, or aces, I thought she would bet that flop. Um, I also thought she would bet ace, king. I just, I just thought that, uh, and, and not everyone would or should necessarily. I think uh, Ace King is a is a really decent check on that flop, but I just thought that, um, given what I had seen of her play, that she would. Um, so when she checked, I thought she had a hand that was likely to check fold um, something maybe closer to what I thought, like Queens. Um, uh, I don't know if she was willing to play Aces this way, uh, and I decided that the that the best course of option for me to get the best course of action, excuse me, for me to get two streets would be to check and then and then um, see if she bet the turn or if not, then bet the turn myself. So um, at, when she checked the flop, I did think her most likely hand was queens. I could not rule out aces or ace king necessarily, um, but I was likely to get the money anyway if she had aces or ace king. I didn't think I was really costing myself much, but I thought her most likely hand was queen. And then uh, she bet the turn. I called and she bet the river and I. Uh, went all in. I thought the river, I thought the turn bet was reasonable, um, just in case I have a hand like Jack's or something, um, which I usually don't. Uh, so I didn't really know what she thought I could have that would fold. Um, so the interesting, the most interesting thing is her, is her river bet, which I think is just suicidal. I think, um, and she said she was trying to get me to fold queens, which is weird if your objective is to get someone to fold the exact same hand that you have of which there's one combination in the deck and you're tying with that hand. So her, so of all the hands in my range, she was trying to get the one hand that was the exact same as hers to fold, which I thought was um, extremely ambitious. And I think that the, that if she bets the turn, the river should be a check fold for her. Um, I think it's really unlikely that I am ever bluffing the river as played when I check back the flop and call the turn and call her five bet preflop. So it was actually it was actually pretty interesting, um, and I think uh, I think her mistake was uh, five betting at preflop and then talking to me about it. Um, it wouldn't there's there was still a very high chance that I called preflop and then the hand went the same way, uh, even if she had aces and decided to talk about it. But I didn't think she should have. I, I didn't think she should have said anything. Um, but that's the beauty of live poker. You know, you get this additional information at the table and the more um, experienced you become at, at utilizing this information and, and, and figuring out what all that means, then that becomes part of what we were talking about before, the instinct. Um, and your instincts get more and more and more spot on as, as it goes. So, so um, you said she said that um, she's trying to get you to fold queens. Does she talk about other hands she, that she thought in your range? Like was kings in your range? No, she folded and said was trying to get you to fold queens. So it just I it didn't make a lot of sense to me. It it felt like the that she got attached to sort of what she was doing and the aggression in her hand and wasn't willing to fold it and it, it didn't seem that well thought out. Like one of the the basic tenets of poker is that you are trying to accomplish something with your hand. You're trying to get someone to fold a better hand. You're trying to get someone to call with a worse hand. And it didn't seem like she had really thought out my range so much. Maybe she thought that I would shove kings or aces preflop or ace king, which then does kind of make it interesting um, because, but, but then she should decide if she's value betting or bluffing. And if she thinks I shove those hands preflop, 
then she should be value betting or, or, or checking to call a bluff or something like that. Um, but she doesn't really get value from any of those hands anyway. And um, I think if she had that read that I would shove ace king um, or kings, that was not, that was incorrect. <laughs> but I don't think that she was, that she was thinking that. So there was a lot of, there were a lot of things going on in the hand and a lot of ways you can look at it. Well, what did she think she would think about this? And it's all that, like you, you think that I think that you think that I think kind of thing. Um, of so, course, but it's interesting because I thought actually when I watched the hands, I was thinking, Oh, I'm such a novice. Like with Kings here after someone five bets, like I'm like, Oh, I'm just shoving and I'm so excited to get it in. And, but then I was thinking that actually you got so much more value by not doing that necessarily or not putting her into that position right away. But if you knew she had Queens, would you want to be then just shoving all in preflop with Kings? Uh, no, absolutely not. If I knew she had Queens, I would play it the exact same way. I, I think, um, that it's very unusual for someone to six bet shove over their cold four bet with a hand worse than Queens right. um, deep stacked in this high stakes of a game with no real, like, I mean, it's not that I haven't been known to, to spew or do something crazy, but, but there was just no reason for it in this spot in this game versus this player. Also, she had made that call versus Kristen with the flesh when Kristen was trying to rep the boat. And so I've already seen that this is a player that's not necessarily willing to hero fold. So I'm just so unlikely to six bet bluff in that spot. She, and I'm not going to do it with a hand that's Jack's and I'm very unlikely to get in like, however many we had like 250 big lines of king pre flush in, in that spot. Anything worse than what you have. Well, uh, you're amazing. You're a doll. You're amazing. <laughs> I'm going to wrap this one. Hold on.